Hello everyone, so this is going to be a review of Saints Row 4. So, I'm going to point out the good, the bad, and an overview of the entire game, and we'll base it on a score as well. Since I'm the only one that played Saints Row 4, normally I have Jeremy sometimes. We'll combine our scores together, and that's what the scores usually comprised of. Um, since it was only me playing, I'm the only one that's going to be giving it a score because, well, I'm the one that played it. And Jeremy did play a little bit of it, but he didn't join me, and he hasn't finished the game yet anyway, either. So, he isn't included, so don't worry about that. So, as always, the seven main points, or the scores that I go on, there's a little paper over here, which is going to be art, graphics, gameplay, storyline, difficulty, the audio, and the music, and sound quality, and whatnot, replayability, and the memorability of the game. So, with that all being said, I'll start with the bad things, then go with the good, and then give you all just a wrap-up of... Uh, our review. So, the bad is going to be, I don't know, I felt like the game was way too dark. In the beginning of the game, it wasn't too bad because it just was, well, you know, you just kind of expected it, so you didn't really think too much of it. But then, when you can progress through the game, sure, it lightens up a tiny bit, but it feels like it lightens up way, way, way at the end. Um, I mean, the last couple, the last segment of the game, it finally brightens up. I won't ruin it for those who haven't played the game yet, but... It feels like it, it lightened up way way too long at the end, and it, once you do beat the game, you're able to toggle through um, settings as well. You can have daytime, the 50s setting, which you'll understand if you did play the game, um, and then also the night setting if you really wanted that still. Um, but besides that, uh, it felt like it was a somewhat glitchy game to begin with. There's okay, spots okay. where I had so to, set the game just stopped play. completely, and then I had to redo it and just render video. Um, over and it just was it, it was frustrating at some points, but you know you got over it. Some games are just like that and a little bit glitchy, but it's somewhat of disappointing. But it will not render your experience intolerable. I mean, you'll still be able to play the game and have tons of fun with it. It doesn't make it where it's just unplayable. Um, I wish that the art and the graphics were changed a little bit. I felt like it literally was Saints Row 3 pasted onto Saints Row 4, and that's what comprised of the game. Which was a little bit disappointing. Maybe the graphics were tuned up just a little bit, but I think it just was because it was always oh, nighttime, so I felt like bright neon lights kind of made it feel you know, a little bit brighter than it really casino. was. <laughs> um, or the graphics were a little bit better. Um, the vehicles were rendered useless for the most part. I really never used any vehicles. There was no point. The superpowers took over that aspect of the game entirely. And there's a lot of customization to the vehicles from what I saw too. Um, the homies were pretty much rendered useless as well. Only in missions where you were given the homies were you really using them. I mean, you still could use them outside of that, and they did help. They really did. But I never needed them. There was no real reason to have them. Um, and then at the end of the game, it felt like the superpowers were so overpowered that, I mean, that's really what got you through stuff. I suppose that was just the mechanic of the game to begin with anyway, and that was their planning, but it felt like by the end of the game, it kind of, I don't know, it felt, I don't know, it didn't feel right, but it was still enjoyable. I mean, if nothing else, at least the superpowers got to a point where you did feel powerful enough where you could just destroy anything, so it was nice in that regards, but now... That's the bad, and now the good is going to be that it had an absolutely funny story. There was tons of satire throughout the whole game. You know, quoted crazy lines, music that just was funny, and you sang along with your homies. And I mean, really, it was like any other Saints Row game, which is a good thing. Um, and then the DLC was going to be for Saints Row 3, Enter the Dominatrix. That's what this was going to be. And I was a little bit skeptical at first, as a lot of other people were as well. But I really do think that they did a really nice job with it. It didn't feel like a DLC entirely. There was things that were copied and pasted, like the, you know, the the clothes. There really wasn't too much more options from the third one that you could choose with the fourth. But that's not a big deal. Same thing with the weapons. But again, I didn't really. That's not really too big of a deal. Um, it had a great difficulty. There was not really any points where I thought it was too difficult and I couldn't do it. It was really hard. There was a hard setting, so if you are one of those people that really like games that are hard, there is a hard difficulty. I didn't try it, but I'm sure it works very well, and it will give you a challenge. That's what you're looking for. Um, but again, this game was not designed for difficulty. The last part of the game was a little bit challenging, but not really that hard. There really wasn't anything that's a real stickler, and you're going to sit there for an entire day trying to get this. It's not a Dark Souls kind of game, so you don't need to worry. Co-op is extremely fun. Get a friend only has one other co-op player that you can have and you can go and 
play tag and do other things. It's really fun. Um, that part adds tons of memorability to the game. Um, it's very replayable because there's multiple endings, so that way you can kind of mix and match and play a whole new game if you want, or just revert from a save game and do all the loyalty missions and then get the good ending. Just so if you don't know, if you haven't watched my videos, um, all you gotta do is just get all the loyalty missions finished. It's the only side quest you need to do. Beat the entire game, and then you will get the good ending. If you don't do all the loyalty missions, you won't get the good ending. For those wondering and want to know. And then, the music scores are great. There was tons of, like, <laughs> crazy things. There's crazy weapons. There was a dubstep gun, which is really funny. Um, and then just music in general with the no. crazy... Like Keep running. hard rock beats and all the I crazy things that go on. It, it was really funny. Um, it was greatly, really fantastically placed alongside just literally music, literal music, if I'm saying that wrong, kind of mixed match that, but more or less like Baby Don't Hurt Me, Aerosmith in the beginning of the game, things that are in our culture today. Um, there, there was great, great music scores all throughout the game. They did a really, really good job with that. And then the best part, I think, is superpowers. Superpowers is what made this game. This game wouldn't be anything without it. I mean, that's, again, what made this game. I mean, that it made it extremely fun. It really reminds me of Crackdown. I don't know if you guys have played Crackdown, but that game was one of my favorite games. It's like GTA, but on crack, and you could just jump up to buildings with one bound and everything. I mean, it's, it's essentially what Saints Row... 4 was. It's like Crackdown, but slapped on with Saints Row. But it's not a bad thing, it was a good thing. And now lastly, the overview here. So it was a violation, violation game. Okay, I can't pronounce that. Um, they're the developers, and then Deep Silver is the publisher. They're a German publisher. They also make, um, uh, what is it now? Um, Dead Island. They just came out with Dead Island Riptide not too long ago, too. And then... So the game's going to be forty nine ninety nine at least at this time of the recording, which is the 20th of September. Um, I'm sure it'll go down in price as well, just like the third did. So if you want to buy it at a discount, I'm sure by the end of the year, maybe like a Christmas deal might go down to 20 bucks, maybe cheaper. I don't know. Um, can't promise that either, so don't quote me on that. And then if you guys want to know how long is this game, how long will it keep me preoccupied, it's about a 30-40 hour game if you complete everything. I completed the main story, loyalty missions, and all that in nine hours. I'm sure you probably could cut it down to seven to eight hours. That's the story. But I had barely touched getting all the power-ups and all the homie upgrades and the vehicle upgrades. If you, if you go for all that, this game will last 30 to 40 hours, maybe even 50 if you stretch it. Um, so with all that said, without further ado, Amnesty Gaming gives this game a score of 8.5 out of 10. So, that's going to wrap it up, guys. Um, if you haven't played Saints Row 4, I highly suggest you go and do so. It's a really funny game. It's an awesome game. If you don't want the aspects of GTA 5 that are very, really, I don't know, it feels more serious in those games, um, and you want a funny flip side of GTA, um, definitely go with Saints Row 4, or any of the Saints Row, really, for that matter. Um, you could even pick up Saints Row the 3rd and kind of get the same experience that you would in the 4th. Um, and so that's going to wrap it up, guys. Um, please leave in the comments um, what you guys want to see as far as the next series goes. Uh, leave in the comments any con comments, concerns, your rating of the game, if that's what you want to do as well. Also, hit that like button. Please subscribe. Those of you that aren't subscribed or haven't seen the entire series of Saints Row the Fourth, please watch it. Um, in the link or in the video, there should be a link to the entire series. Click it. Check out the stuff that I got. Um, hope you guys enjoy. And I hope you guys have a great day. And I'll catch you later.